So good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Paul Pin, for the introduction. I also would like to thank John Barros for the invitation to to come here and to talk to you. And uh, um, my presentation would will be uh, perhaps a bit different from the previous ones. I I'm going to talk about um, the uh, challenges that uh, energy uh, will bring to the way how we we have to face. Um, the future cities regarding, for instance, the presence of electric mobility and uh, the response that the consumers should give in order to, to accommodate uh, some new changes that we are facing. And uh, one of the most important changes that uh, we are facing nowadays is that um, electricity is going to come more and more from renewable power sources. Uh, and this is, this is a fact, otherwise uh, we are going to have uh, big problems regarding uh, the threats of the climatic changes. Uh, we will not be capable to, to, to keep the increase in the Earth temperature uh, according to the um, targets that the International Panel for Climatic Changes has already defined. And so, in fact, this, this is a big challenge, and this requires a completely different vision regarding the way how we use and we exploit the energy that we, 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 we need. And of course, this involves a progressive uh, move towards uh, the integration, the deployment of electric vehicles on the existing fleets. Um, of course, that uh, we, we have a problem when integrating a lot of uh, renewable power sources in the, in, in the electricity portfolio is that um, uh, this uh, renewable power generation, electricity generation, has a characteristic of variability. And, uh, okay, so this is going to require uh, a lot of flexibility from some of these uh, consumers, some of these uh, EV owners because they are going to be, in fact, uh, consumers. And uh, there is one thing that you, you need to understand. Uh, it only makes sense to, to move towards electric mobility if we are really committed to, to use renewable power sources. Renewable power sources that, in fact, will feed the EV batteries. Otherwise, it makes not much sense just to have um, fossil fuel power plants to, to feed the needs of electricity of these, EV, uh, um, these EVs. Uh, so we need to invest a lot on this uh, renewable generation and also we, we need to understand that uh, renewable generation will not come only from large facilities, but it will come um, very much from distributed generation, from self-generation, that is nowadays gaining uh, b big importance. So you can see the house of the future, that is in this uh, slide, it will be a house where it will be possible to generate our own electricity, of course not all the one that we will need, where we will have capability of stores, some, some energy, uh, where we will connect the electric vehicle that of course is also, apart from being a load, is also a flexible um, uh, storage device. And of course we need to communicate upstream to, to, in order to receive signals, uh, set points, in order to adjust the way how the, the, the behavior in terms of the, the, the patterns of consumption, uh, how these consumers will, will, will need to, to, to behave. So the key issue for the future is, in fact, flexibility. So we need to, to, de to, to develop a system that is flexible enough to cope with this uh, uh, large-scale variability from the side of the, of, the, of the renewable resources. So this means, from the side of the electric mobility, that um, the charging of the electric vehicles should be controlled. Controlled in a way that we can shape the power demand. Otherwise, it makes not much sense. For instance, we, we, we all know that um, uh, that it makes a lot of sense if we are capable to charge electric vehicles during the valley hours, during the night hours. This, this would avoid 
wasting clean energy, and in, in fact, we would use this clean energy, perhaps, namely in the cases where it comes from uh, wind power, uh, and to use it for, to feed um, these this, um, this, uh, electric vehicles. Uh, so this is the way, in fact, electric vehicles will, will contribute also to safely accommodate a large quantity of these intermittent or variable renewable energy sources. Uh, of course, that in order for this to become true, and uh, I already mentioned that, we, 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 we will need to develop a framework for the integration of the electric vehicles into the smart cities, into the electric power system as a whole, and we need to identify the data flows, and we need to define new entities. And one of these entities is the aggregator. So we will need to identify um, a new entity, so-called the aggregator, that is going to communicate with the different uh, single players that have no uh, capacity to, for instance, to bid on the electricity markets or to establish dialogues with the system operators. And so this aggregator will have a, a key role in the development of uh, all these, uh, these uh, new uh, uh, changes. Uh, and of course, when I, when I talk of electric vehicles, I'm, I, I, don't want, I don't want to mean that electric vehicles will be the only, the only um, responsive loads. So in fact, there are other flexible loads at home, like thermal loads, like air conditioning. And so the, the issue here, and since the, this, this session is very much um, oriented towards services and, um, and, and, so, and uh, also uh, to, to talk about all this, this new framework. So what I want to tell you is that the consumers, the EV drivers, they will be service providers in this new environment. Uh, so now we have to think about, about, about the policies that need to be implemented for the future in order for this to become true. So what is needed, for instance, for electric mobility to, to deploy? So we will need policies to incentivize people to, to acquire electric vehicles. We will need policies to incentivize the users to adhere to the so-called controlled EV charging schemes. Because, uh, as I said, it makes no sense just uh, to, that if everybody arrives at home at the same time and just plugs the electric vehicle to, to the grid, so we will have a large peak in, in electricity consumption and this will be uh, quite difficult to manage. So we will have to develop this concept of controlled EV charging schemes. We need policies related with the physical implementation of all these concepts. And we need regulation policies, and this has already been mentioned before, for the activities related with uh, all these uh, schemes uh, that involve the response from the side of the, of the consumers. So regarding the policies to incentivize the acquisition of EVs, okay, so we may say that we have tax reduction in the acquisition of the electric car, Direct incentives for buying EVs. Well, nowadays this seems to be a little bit difficult due to the economic crisis that we are facing. But we had, we already had this, uh, this kind of uh, uh, schemes, but presently they are no longer uh, being adopted. We can use a reduction on the vehicle tax for EV owners. We should develop free parking facilities for EV in city centers. We should allow EV access to areas restricted to conventional vehicles, and we should allow EVs to drive in bus-only lanes. So these are simple uh, measures that can be taken in order to promote, and they will not have a big cost, especially these last ones, in order to promote the development of electric mobility inside urban areas. We, of course, uh, the, regarding policies to incentivize users to adhere to the so-called controlled EV charging, well, this is a, a little bit more uh, tricky um, because uh, these policies should be implemented by the so-called aggregators, so they should be the ones that, uh, that uh, should do that, and this can be done by providing energy at lower prices for the EV owners that will adhere to these concepts. Uh, I, I, I want to just to 
to call your attention for the fact that the electric cars, they can be, uh, as, a, as a matter of fact, storage devices. So they can operate in some situations by just delivering back energy to the grid. And this is the so-called V2G concept. And this is something that needs also to be developed, although we are still a little bit far in time to, 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 to develop these, these ideas. So continuing just uh, enumerating those um, policies, we should recompensate EV owners and consumers, those consumers that are flexible, for their willingness to provide service system services, because as I said, we have to develop a society that where in the future the consumers are not only the consumers of energy or electricity, but they will also provide services. And these services are flexibility services. And uh, of course, uh, we need to also think about how to implement physically all these concepts. So. This is one way to do it will, will require the deployment of smart meters. This is something that already has been mentioned before. So this is a way to do it, but of course it's not the only way. Uh, but we need to put a lot of effort, and so the regulators, especially the re electricity regulators, they have here a key role to play when uh, just trying to promote the deployment of, of smart meters, because in fact they are key they will play a very important role in fostering all these, uh, these, these ideas. And uh, finally, some uh, regulatory policies that uh, have also to deal with, uh, for instance, data protection policies, policies to regulate the interactions between uh, the so-called aggregators and system operators, policies to regulate the aggregator system operators to assess the communication infrastructure, because the communication infrastructure is in fact key for the success of all these, uh, these, these developments. And uh, finally, uh, policies to regulate how these aggregators will participate in electricity markets. Because uh, this electricity that is going to, to be used by these consumers, this is electricity that will be traded in electricity markets. So this is the reason why we need uh, this aggregating capacity. And uh, since I, I want to be um, very much uh, compliant with time, I'm finishing my presentation now. Thank you very much for your attention.